I hope you're wearing plastic pants because you're going to pee yourself when you see what I have for you today. Welcome back to OG's Danger Show. <laughs> So welcome back to The Danger Show. Hey, I've got something very cool to show you today I think you're gonna like. The FK Berno. This is a 7.5 millimeter round, very new, innovative, proprietary round. Um, I thought this was kind of cool. I, I noticed this the other day. This is serial number 32. So uh, Mac over at Military Arms Channel has serial number one. We got serial number 32. If you haven't already seen it over on Tau Flater Mouse, we're gonna do a little bit smaller review on this pistol and see what it does with some targets downrange. But you can get the most information for your information dollar here on OG's Danger Show regarding this pistol. Along with the pistol, they sent out 250 rounds of ammunition. They sent three boxes of their jacketed hollow point, and they sent out two boxes of their nose discarding bullet, which is kind of cool. It's actually designed to hit soft tissue. The nose actually breaks up and leaves you with a what they call a, a meplat. Basically, just imagine a solid copper cylinder flying through the, for deeper penetration. Does devastating things to, to meat targets from what I've seen. The Berno factory, which is a subsidiary of CZ, the world famous uh, pistol maker that has uh, gained so much popularity here in the US. The Berno importer is now late located in Gainesville, Florida. So they're bringing all these pistols in from the Czech Republic and selling them to you here right in the United States. But they are made in Brno, Czech Republic. By the way, it's Brno, folks. I've watched a couple of videos about this pistol already and done some research on it. Brno, not Bruno. Here's Bruno. Here's Brno. Bruno? Brno. So here in front of me, I have the FK Berno pistol. Not a tiny pistol, not a CCW or a concealment pistol by any means, but would make a heck of a hunting pistol, backpacking gun. There might be some use in the, in the United States for law enforcement. Probably what it's best compared to is the Glock 20 because the Glock 20 is a 10 millimeter and this FK Berno also shoots 10 millimeter. So I have here a Glock 20, it is clear. Glock 20 and 10 millimeter. And I'm going to show you side by side. They are similar, but you can see right there that the Glock 20, which is already considered to be kind of a big pistol, is sort of dwarfed by the 7.5 FK PSD. Top to bottom, they're almost exactly the same. The Berno pistol is just a little bit longer because of that steel insert on there for mounting the uh, buttstock. But they are big guns, folks. There is just no... No denying that. You're not buying this for a deep concealment pistol. Now we could also compare this to the Smith & Wesson M&P 45, another big pistol that I like carrying in the winter. One of my bigger guns also. No comparison whatsoever. There's the 45, the Smith & Wesson 45, and the FK Berno 7.5 PSD. This thing has a nice ergonomic grip on it. It's got nice little texturing here that's not too rough. It's actually 
fits the hand very nicely, even though it feels like it's a big giant pistol and a lot of weight out front. It actually seems to fit my hands, and I got rather large hands, fit, fit them pretty well. There's a little steel insert down here that is able to be snapped on and off. This steel insert is so that one can attach just by snapping on the arm brace. And when you attach that arm brace, you now essentially have a, a PDW, a personal defense weapon, that can be shouldered, and this thing can be used like a, like a small rifle. Included in the box is a 10 millimeter barrel, so that makes it very easy for us to practice with cheaper ammo. And anywhere in the United States, you can pretty much get your hand, well, in normal times, you can get your hands on 10 millimeter ammunition fairly easily. A lot of people even reload 10 millimeter ammunition. It's becoming more and more popular. So I thought it was a very nice little touch that they include a 10 millimeter barrel that can be dropped into this FK Berno very easily. So if you happen to run out of their proprietary rounds and you're waiting for your shipment to come from Florida, you can drop in your 10 millimeter barrel and run 40 caliber or 10 millimeter out of this thing in a pinch. That's a cool touch. It's also important to know that they will sell you an aftermarket 9 millimeter barrel. The 9 millimeter barrel comes with two 9 millimeter magazines that are smaller than their 7.5 uh, or slash 10 millimeter magazines. The 10 millimeters run out of the exact same magazines as the 7.5 because the 7.5 round is actually based on a 10 millimeter cartridge that's been necked down to 7.5 millimeters for the projectile. When you order the 9 millimeter barrel, you get a lighter recoil spring and you get two magazines for the 9 millimeter. Now this is awfully large for a 9 millimeter pistol, but I see why they do it. There are countries out there, Germany being one of them, where you're allowed to own one, one firearm. And this is why SIG designed their little modular frame system that you can add all the, you can make the pistol bigger and smaller and compact and full size and different calibers, all with one internal uh, unit. So if you were to buy yourself this 7.5 PSD from FK Bruno, you would be able to shoot nine millimeter, 40 caliber and 10 millimeter along with their outstanding 7.5 millimeter round. So the 7.5 PSD pistol is designed to shoot a non-lead 95 grain projectile that has a thick walled kind of a proprietary brass case. It's a thicker walled case than, a, than your standard 10 millimeter round. It, at the back of it actually looks just like a 10 millimeter round. The pistol is also designed for these very high pressures without having to have a recoil spring that is so unbelievably stiff that you wouldn't be able to rack it back by hand. We're getting ballistics out of this pistol that are very similar to the small little Draco AK-47 pistols. So it's a 30 caliber round. It's actually .311 caliber. We're getting a 30 caliber pistol round that is up there right next to the 30 carbine, the M1 carbine. That's some pretty dang impressive ballistics out of something that is a handgun that can be carried under a jacket or in some kind of a, uh, a pouch while hunting or backpacking. That's pretty cool. So the theory of use behind this pistol, um, it was originally developed for some security contractors working over in the Middle East. They were looking for something that kind of bridged the gap in between a sidearm, a, a nine millimeter or a 45 caliber uh, pistol that was uh, holstered on the side of a soldier and a M16 or an M4 rifle. They were finding out that they had, uh, they were engaging people at distances of 100 to 150 meters downrange, and the rifle was often too uh, unwieldy, but the pistol, there's no way you had uh, very good ballistics at those ranges with a nine millimeter or a 45, and getting hits on target down there were a little difficult. So they wanted something that kind of filled that gap, and they started working on this round to uh, reach down there 100 yards down range and deliver that kind of outstanding energy on target. Part of the parameters for designing this round is they needed to be able to hit a four inch by four inch square at 110 yards. That's a 10 centimeter square at 100 meters. And they didn't want the velocity at 100 meters to be any less, any less than 450 meters per second, which is about 400, 1,475 feet per second. That's fast. They wanted to be able to penetrate a level 3A soft body armor vest at 100 yards. So we have a soft body armor vest out here with us today. I'm losing sunlight, so we're probably gonna wrap up this introduction portion of this pistol. And let's come back out tomorrow when we got a little more, more sun. I will have to wait till tomorrow. Through the powers of YouTube editing, you guys have to wait about this fast. So let's do a real quick tabletop on this pistol. I just wanted to show you around, around the pistol a little bit. 
um, some of the features that make it pretty dang impressive. It's got some of the best machining that I've ever seen on a pistol. It's beautiful, beautiful metal work. There is no scratches, there's no machine marks on here. It is well, a very well finished pistol, but the polymer frame on this thing is actually some of the most impressive work. This is far better crafted. It's a hard polymer, a little bit harder than, than your, your average Glock, let's say, but there are no little flags on this. There's no, there's no little pieces hanging off that needed to be sanded down. It's, it's beautiful mold work. So um, very impressive craftsmanship on that pistol. It's a single action only, which means that the hammer needs to be cocked for every round. So I, to let the hammer down, I need to pull the trigger and slowly let it down with my thumb. You can see on this side, the safety is off right now. You can see the slide stop, slide release there. The safety here, uh, similar to a 1911, the safety is off in the down position and on in the up position, which is a good design. It's intuitive for American shooters. There's some cool little uh, bolts here in the back. You might be able to see these little bolts. They've got uh, a little bit of, well, they've got machine marks around them. Gives them some texture. And the cool thing about those bolts is that we can use those bolts in the back as ears to actually draw that slide back and release it. Makes it actually very nice. Instead of relying on the machine marks front and rear, which actually are very, very easy to use. Again, the, the slide on this thing moves ridiculously easy. Uh, for something that's shooting such a heavy round. I can reach up here and very easily do a chamber check. I mean like super easy, way easier than most of my Glocks. Same thing back here, but those little bolts in the back kind of give you a little purchase right there and allow you to draw that slide back a little easier for, for chambering or for chamber checking. Nice touch. So we've got a nice lightweight polymer frame here with the uh, steel rails inside that allow that slide to travel on a, a nice supported little track there. So if you take a look here on the slide, we've got this big giant oversized recoil spring and a little recoil spring end here that's like bigger than a dime, smaller than a nickel, but bigger than a dime. It very easily compresses and comes right off. And then you can see this little proprietary weight. This is a heavy little weight. I don't have a scale out here to show you, but this little weight is kind of the key behind the whole Berno pistol. This weight, when mounted in here with your recoil spring, travels rearward with the slide on recoil. So not only is the weight countering the, the nose of the pistol as it rises under recoil, but the slide and this weight are traveling rearward on this frame together meaning all of this weight that, that slides back is nice and low to the handle. We got a low bore axis on this pistol and the slide and weight are traveling rearward and they're countering the effects of that flip. All the weight now is in the back of your hand here um, upon full recoil, not out here uh, trying to flip up in the air. So actually works out pretty nice. We're gonna try it here in a second and see what we think of the actual uh, recoil impulse of this pistol. You can see in the slide here the portion of the slide that accepts that weight. So it's a nice heavy, heavy chunk of steel that uh, rides up here in the slide, locks in there, and helps counter the recoil of that pistol. So while we're here, these are well machined little barrels. I mean, very well done. There's no rough edges, there's no burrs. It's got a polished feed ramp on it right there. The 7.5 sits in there nice and deep in that chamber, right up to the shoulder of that round. There is that full case support right there. So that's a nice little feature when you're talking about something so hot. Now, you might be asking yourself, self, what would happen if I tried to put a 10 millimeter round in the 7.5 barrel? Would that go off if I was not paying attention and reading the little proof marks right there on the top of the slide that tell me what caliber I'm trying to run. Well, I'm glad you asked. I have a 10 millimeter round here, and I will show you that if you try and insert the 10 millimeter round, it will not seat. There's just no way you're gonna chamber a 10 millimeter round. Um, it would be catastrophic if you were to get that round in there and somehow able to light it off because the bore is 7.8 millimeters wide as opposed to 10 millimeters. So that would uh, obviously not work. 
So that 10 millimeter round will not see, it protects you from all kinds of catastrophic explosions that could happen inside this pistol. Now pulling out the 10 millimeter barrel, here's the 10 millimeter barrel. I'm gonna drop the 10 millimeter case in there. There is no play there, it's a very well machined barrel. You can see full case support again right there, done very, very well. Full case support around that 10 millimeter round, so you're gonna, not gonna get any bulging or cracking, so pay attention to your 10 millimeter proof marks right there on the barrel hood. Let's take that 10 millimeter round out. Let's say you went in to load your 7.5 into your 10 millimeter barrel. Will that work? Well, sure, this is a little bit smaller than the 10 millimeter, so it will sit all the way in there, and you can see it actually sits flush inside the chamber. I mean, does not even protrude. So it's very likely you could get the firing pin to strike that and light off around. So what's gonna happen? Well, this case is likely gonna rupture a little bit down here on the end where it's not supported. That round is gonna fly down a 10 millimeter uh, barrel, not engage any rifling. It's gonna come out the other side. You're gonna get a ruptured case, but this barrel is so well built, I don't imagine you're gonna have any major problems Obviously you don't want to do this, but uh, just to let you know that if for some reason you accidentally had a round in there, um, it's probably not going to kill you. One of the big selling points of this pistol is the fact that a 40 caliber round will also fit in this barrel. It'll fit in the 10 millimeter barrel. And I'll be dang, yes it does. So we're going to test one of those out here today. FK Berno advertises the fact that this is a 10 millimeter and a 40 caliber barrel. Um, Glock obviously does not recommend that you put a 40 caliber into the Glock 20, into a 10 millimeter Glock pistol. I have done it for years and years and years. And a lot of viewers have written in and said, oh, that's unsafe, OG. Well, listen, I've shot it out of my Glock 20 for probably 15 years or so. And I've never had any problems with this. This to me is a, a much cheaper practice ammo, um, whether Ammo supplies are good or bad. I can always get 40 caliber. For me to be able to practice with this pistol with a 40 caliber round, and even 10 millimeter is fairly common in the US now, um, is actually kind of a plus. If I can't get my hands on this 7.5 round, it is a little pricey and it's a little probably hard to come by since there's only one maker right now. I could certainly convert my pistol to 10 millimeter and have a great little 10 millimeter pistol. And for practice, I could shoot a 40 caliber. I want to show you up here in the slide just the uh, the beautiful machine work inside this slide. No machine marks whatsoever, no scratches, no gouging, no burrs, nicks, nothing. That is a that's like some of the old SIG pistols. I'm not sure if you can see in there the breech face, very strong and well built, completely surrounds the case head with a little ring of steel, and you've got an extractor in here that's uh, yeah, similar to a 1911 in that it's uh, inset in the slide. There's an interesting little barrel shroud that's been set into this slide. And so that's kind of a cool little feature. Not only is it a, a nice look, but it ensures a nice tight lockup with those barrels. The pistol comes from the factory with these very fine, very small sights. There's a U-notch rear sight and a very fine red dot front sight, painted red dot, not glowing or anything. Not sure if you can see there. Comes from the factory that way. They also send with them a set of replacement sights. I set these replacement sights up just on a magazine because to me they don't appear that they're going to be superior sights. They supply you with a ghost ring rear sight that marries up with a orange triangle front sight. So very fast target acquisition. I don't think they're probably going to be as precise for distance but uh, maybe we'll swap those on there and give them a try a little later on. I think, however, classy package that they give you a completely different set of sights here, ready to go for your pistol if you choose to drop them on there. And of course, the slide of the PSD is milled for a red dot optic. Very easy to pull out those little torque screws right there, remove this plate, and drop in your little Trijicon or Holosun or whatever kind of uh, red dot optic you like there. Okay, so I'm gonna reassemble my uh, FK Berno 7.5 PSD, but I'm gonna reassemble it with the 10 millimeter barrel in there first. I haven't shot this pistol yet. I wanna try 40 caliber and 10 millimeter rounds out of it first and compare that with the proprietary 7.5 FK round and see what the difference is in recoil. Thank you. 
Now when we're loading 10 millimeter rounds into this magazine, I will show you that there's a little quirk to this. As I take these 10 millimeter rounds, of course they start in this magazine just fine. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's very difficult to get number 11 in there. And I've heard from other reviewers that you usually want to leave this at 10 and so far that's pretty much the experience I'm having right now. Number 11, I guess I could probably wrestle it in there, but yeah, there's number 11. I don't know about number 12. I don't know if 12 is going to do it. That seems to be it. It's actually putting a lot of pressure on the outsides of this magazine here, sort of swelling the side of the, the magazine. And as you, in, as you insert the magazine into the magazine well, you can actually feel the resistance right there. It will go in, absolutely, but you can feel there's more resistance as this it starts to catch right here on its way in because those 10 millimeter rounds have actually pushed the walls of that steel magazine outward just a little bit but it will seat of course and make ourselves a nice little 10 millimeter pistol let's get to shooting it okay i've got a steel target set up over here a few yards away i've got uh some flat nose 10 millimeter rounds just practice ammo here that I ran into this. So the first shots out of this FK Berno 7.5 are actually gonna be in 10 millimeter. I'm at about 15 yards away on a steel target. Extremely accurate and very comfortable to shoot. So one of the carriage bolts on my target is broken from uh, idiots shooting it at work. However, my 10 millimeter rounds, I don't know if you can see here, easy to make headshots at 15 yards. I mean, not even a, not even a question. And I gotta tell you, there is something weird about that recoil impulse. It's actually very, very comfortable in 10 millimeter. I've never shot a 10 millimeter that was that smooth shooting. It's far more comfortable than a nine millimeter pistol. Not as snappy as a 45, a nine millimeter 40. It's, I guess, not as easy as a 22 pistol, but uh, boy, you'd have to feel that. That is crazy light recoil in 10 millimeter. But now what you've all been waiting for, let's get down to the 7.5 FK round. Okay, since I don't actually know what these rounds are gonna do against steel because they're quite a bit more powerful, I'm going to run this uh, camera, I ran the camera and my shooting position back to about 20 yards or between 20 and 25 yards away from that steel target right now. Let's give it a try. Safety off and chamber check. Like a true single action pistol, the hammer has to be cocked. At this point right here, if I wanted to carry with one in the chamber, I could drop that hammer right there. And you'll notice the pistol is on fire. But right now, I can pull that trigger all I want, and I'm not going to get a double action trigger pull. It is not going to cock that hammer, and I am stuck dead until I manually cock that hammer right here. I can carry it cocked and locked like, uh, like a standard 1911 pistol, which would be my preferred way if I was out hunting or backpacking and I needed to make sure that I was in a ready-to-go situation. It's got a very, very positive click on and off safety. It's not going to accidentally be swiped off. All right, let's put some 7.5 rounds on that steel target. I'm going to try for some headshots since we have these very fine long distance uh, target sights. Safety off. I got to tell you folks, that's actually a very comfortable recoil as well. Maybe a little bit more than the 10 millimeter but it is not a snappy pistol. You can actually feel that slide coming back almost in a, in a slow recoil impulse. It's very, very comfortable to shoot. Probably has a lot to do with this ergonomic design of this grip too, but a very comfortable pistol to shoot the 7.5 round out of. Boy, 
Well, I like that. I could shoot that 7.5 all day long if I could afford it. It's actually a very comfortable round. Crazy comfortable to shoot in no way. I mean, you could bring a new shooter out here and introduce him to this pistol. Probably more comfortable recoil than a nine millimeter, I would say, maybe comparable. Nice. I'm not sure if you guys are able to see this, but these 10 millimeter rounds up here obviously busted off the paint. 40 caliber rounds, same thing, lighter 10 millimeter all, all it is. These little FK rounds, even the jacketed hollow points are leaving little tiny divots in the steel. Not quite like shooting it with a rifle at close range, but little tiny divots. That's pretty cool. That it goes to show quite a bit difference in power right there, focused in on a little 7.5 millimeter round. But very easy to hit this headshots at 25 yards. I want to work on putting 7.5 rounds on that steel target at 100 yards. It's supposed to be very easy to do, and my belief is that with those fine, fine sights, those tiny little sights on there, again, they're not speed sights for self-defense. They will absolutely work for self-defense, but this is supposed to be more like a handheld rifle. And so far, in my experience, this thing is crazy accurate, crazy easy to, uh, to control. So it is probably the next best thing to have on a rifle in your hands. Let's try it at 100 yards. Okay, here we are at 100 yards. That was quite a little trip we took, you and I. I'm gonna turn you around here and show you. Downrange, the orange target against the corn. Thankfully, they put on a box here that it was made for target and defense. Otherwise, I wouldn't even know what to do with them. Probably sit around and like lick them or something. 100 yards. Second try, I got a ding down range. Okay, so the first test we're gonna do is against a level 3A soft body armor, standard police body armor. Now I really don't want the steel target right behind the soft body armor, so I'm gonna take some of these little one by two furring strips and kind of shove them up in there just to give it a little bit of separation from the steel. I bought these strips to use at my range, these little furring strips to use as target stands instead of the stuff our department gives us. These work a lot better. There we go. Hopefully we don't crack those damn things. Let's put one of those 7.5 rounds right here. The uh, advertising says that the rounds will penetrate soft body armor, level 3A soft body armor. But we're going to use the jacketed hollow point rounds first. I don't imagine that's the ones they're talking about. Probably they're talking about that Meplat round, that flat nose round that has more of a penetrating core. Let's try the jacketed hollow points though. We'll take a shot with the 7.5. This is again is the jacketed hollow point round. We'll take a shot down range on that soft body armor and then go down range and see if it made it through. All right, so we've got a little entrance hole right there. Oof, I don't wanna show you here. I don't know if you can see right in there. That round zipped right through. You can even see the Kevlar fibers coming out there. So let's try one of the nose discarding rounds and see what it does in here. I don't think it's going to do anything different, but we might get to see some of those little nose pedals come off. Who knows? Who knows? What did you do, OG? I'll put a round over here, maybe on the left, left side of this thing. And let's try one of those nose discarding 7.5 rounds. Oof. That thing seemed to hit even harder. We've definitely got a hole right there in the vest. I'm going to pull it around the other side. I think we answered our own question. Let's pull you guys around here. So you can see right there, not only is there a hole, but there's some orange paint where it slammed it up against that steel. So that tells me the round made it right through a level 3A vest. Found something interesting to show you. I found three, down, down here underneath the steel target, I found three. They're pretty smashed up. I'm betting these are probably the tens. 
they hit pretty hard flattened out like little pancakes but over here i found little shards and you can vaguely see the shape of the 7.5 fk right there in those little copper shards i know they're not part of this a uh, lot of ammo because they're a different color but that's all we got left is those little shards okay the last thing i want to shoot for you today before our before we lose our sunlight i have a little a jack here that's all messed up I don't expect it's going to do much. We've shot these kind of jacks before on a uh, Tau Flater Mouse with shotgun slugs. Doesn't do a whole lot, but I just happen to have this laying around. Let's give it a try with those two different kinds of rounds. Let's angle it a little bit away. Put a round on that. We didn't strap it down, so who knows what's going to happen. All right, first I have a jacketed hollow point round. I'm doing this upside down, out of focus. Jacketed hollow point round followed by one of the nose discarding rounds right behind it. Nose discarding. Good grief. That actually did way more than I was expecting it to. That's nuts. That just goes to show you some of the power of this round. I actually am kind of surprised. I think it was the jacketed hollow point first. Not really sure. Oh, good Lord, that thing's hot. However, we have a full hole. I mean, it made it all the way through there. You can see the, uh, the OG finger wiggle through that hole. One of the rounds actually punctured that heavy steel and the other round is seated inside this little hole. It is super hot. Set it right here for you on its base so we can see what happened. That thing just slammed into the side of that steel jack. You can see the base of the round right there. That's the half of the 7.5 millimeters. Folded back that top half and just flattened itself in there. But good grief, that is some crazy penetration. I don't even think my 10 millimeter is gonna do that. I know my 45 and 9 millimeters aren't going to do that. Wow, kind of impressed. So I want to thank you for joining me out here for this test on OG's Danger Show. I especially want to thank FK Bruno in Gainesville, Florida. They wanted to get some exposure for this pistol. And so I wanted to show it to you here on OG's Danger Show. And of course, go over and check out a video that we made about this over on Tal Flater Mouse, where we shoot some soft targets uh, with the high-speed camera and uh, we get to see some cool things blow up with this cool little round. Overall, FK Bruno, I'm very, very impressed with this pistol. This is an outstanding gun. At $1,650, it's not for everybody. If I was in the market for something that I needed for backpacking or for hunting, and I wanted something a little bit more oomph to it than a 10 millimeter, this is actually something I would consider. Um, definitely gonna keep this one because uh, this thing's badass. $1,650 isn't all that crazy for a pistol that'll do three calibers like this. Impressive pistol. If you ever get a chance to check one out at a range, definitely look into this. If you are in the market for something like this, you might want to look into this. I have access to a lot of pistols out there. Pretty much every pistol that's made, uh, despite this being California. And please, put your jokes about California down below. It's never been heard before. Boring. It's getting a little old. Let's come up with a new term. I'm a Glock and a Smith & Wesson fan. I like my simple, simple, rugged pistols. I believe they're tools and not pieces of art. Until this came along. This thing is both. This thing is so well made, it's definitely fancier than any pistol I own, but uh, it also, it definitely is a game changer. It's, it's something completely new to the market and it's something actually kind of exciting. So this pistol isn't really for everyone, obviously. There's gonna be a lot of people down here in the comment section poo poo in this round oh oh gee for half that price i could get a glock and uh, make it a 460 roland and okay yes you can uh oh gee i can shoot a 458 uh, so calm yes you can but keep in mind a lot of those are big heavy revolvers with six or eight rounds on board and if i'm out in the woods and i can carry 16 of these rounds and then a spare magazine right behind it to uh, back it up that's an impressive round and uh, i'd opt for something like this any day over a big giant heavy steel revolver. I'm pretty sure you'll be impressed. I appreciate you guys watching. And until the next video, you guys be safe out there. Stay armed where you are legally allowed to do so. These are crazy times. OG out.